what is spirituality i'm going to give you two or more definition what is spirituality one spirituality is scripturality so much as scripturality i want you to say it louder what does it mean when, when we say scripturality what are we saying scripturality simply talks about living by the scripture when you govern your life by the word we tend to say you are spiritual the bible says to be carnally minded is dead the word carnally minded means to base your life on carnality the word carnally minded is gotten from the word carnality and when we talk about carnality, carnality stands on five spheres of operation. The eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth, and the feeling. When you live your life based on what you hear, based on what you feel, based on what you hear is see, what you feel, taste, what you perceive, the Bible says, you will die. That is why it said, to be carnally minded is what? Be dead. That's what they say now. Now, he now went further to say, but to be spiritually minded is what? Life and what? Peace. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Look at it on the screen. For to be carnally minded is what? Dead. But to be spiritually minded is what? life and peace now i said spirituality is scripturality that's one two spirituality is living under the details and the subject of the influence of the person of the holy spirit living under the influence and details of the holy spirit because there are sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you to do some certain things that you have never read in the world. It's later you will discover that that thing he asks you to do is in the world. Am I speaking to somebody here? Because the world is inspired thought of the Spirit. As holy men we are inspired by the Holy Ghost, the root. That is the Bible. The Bible is an inspired thought of the person of the Holy Spirit. That is when you live under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Then we say you are spiritual. One, I say when you live based on the word, we say you are spiritual. Two, when you live based on the influence of the Holy Ghost, we say you are also what? Spiritual. How, how does that come to play? The word and the spirit works together. The name of Jesus cannot get anything done that is not in the world. You see, you read scripture that says, in the name of Jesus, anything can happen. Good. But nothing happens that is not in the world. The Holy Ghost only confirms what is in the world. But look at it now. You don't know everything that is in the world. The Holy Ghost knows everything that is in the world. Now the Holy Ghost inspire you to do some things that you don't even know that is in the world. That's why to subject yourself to the influence and the leadership of the Holy Spirit is one of the greatest things you can do for yourself. You'll be led this week. That is what spiritual growth is all about. Then we cannot say you are growing spiritually based on the more of the word you obey and the more of the influence the Holy Spirit has over you. By that, we cannot say you are growing spiritually. Is that clear to somebody here? But for that to happen, there are things that you must subject yourself to. You don't naturally obey the word. It is not easy to obey the word. Hello? You don't naturally obey the Holy Spirit. It is not easy to obey the Holy Spirit. You must bring yourself under these things I want to share that enhances your spiritual growth because once you grow spiritually, you obey automatically. Am I talking to someone here? Now, what are these things? One is what we call the force of prayers. The force of prayers, one. Two, 
the force of the word. Three, the force of worship and praise. Four, the force of giving. You don't worry who I said them. Now, when these things are in place, they graduate you to take the next step. See, listen to this. Listen, look up, look up, look up, look up. It is no prayer. The word worship that automatically guarantees growth as per se. But once those things are in place, they motivate you to do these other three things. Faith, hope, and love. Your spiritual gauge is determined by the level of your faith. And faith draws from the potency of prayer and the word. I'm talking to somebody here. He said faith comes by hearing. Hearing by what? The word. He now went for the said, Jude 20 said, building up yourself in your most holy faith. Pray where? In the Holy Ghost. That's prayer. Now, let's read scriptures to validate what God is showing us this morning. Are you getting blessed at all? Are you getting blessed in church this morning? Good. Now, let's look at prayers. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, quickly. We'll read four scriptures here as we begin to walk on this tent. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, quickly, let's read. The eyes of your understanding be what? Enlightened. Now, the word enlightened talks about awareness. Talks about not just knowledge. Revelational knowledge. The knowledge that prompts you to take action. He said that the eyes of your understanding may, another translation says may, they added what may, be enlightened. Let's keep reading. That ye may what? No. What is the hope of his calling? And what is the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints? That was Paul's prayer to the church. He said, I am praying for you that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. That ye may know. Now listen to this. One of the things prayer does for you is that it opens your spiritual eyes. Am I talking to somebody here? You see, there are people that reach the world but they don't comprehend. Like the Ethiopia Enoch. But when Philip joined himself to the chariot, he interpreted the scripture to the man and his understanding got opened. And the man said immediately, I want to be baptized. The word I want to be baptized is an action word. That is faith. Am I talking to somebody here? That is Philip succeeded in taking that man from a level to another level. And your action is determined by your level per time. Am I talking to somebody here? The Lord started dealing with me on that some few days back. He said, don't get angry with people. Never expect anything from somebody. Nobody can react based beyond his or her knowledge. I said, how? What did I not do? And I said, then take your teaching ministry deeper. He said, instead of you to be complaining and get angry, do more of teaching. He said, it is what you put in a man that you collect from the man. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? You see that now? That is prayer opens your understanding. Somebody say prayers. Prayers open your understanding. What kind of prayer? It's not give me, give me prayers. As you pray like that and you open the book what happens is flood of light I'm talking to someone here be 
God the Holy Spirit is the revealer of truth. He said, in that day, you will need no man to teach you anything. But the same spirit of truth you have will teach you what? Oh, did he say some? That is, as a Christian, you can know all things. You can know what? Am I talking to you? You can know what? You can know all things. You can't. You can know all things by prayers. By prayers. So much by prayers. I wrote something here. It will help you. Do you know that the Senate of US, the Senate body, before any meeting starts, they start with prayers. And they end with investigation. They start with prayers and end with investigation. Make your research. They've seen it. That's why their brain is working. What you do is a reflection of what you know. And what you know is a reflection of your state of heart. The sin starts with prayer. There is no meeting. See, even their logo, their motto in US is in God we what? You can't trust God without prayers. I don't care how much you have in your account. If you are not a man of prayer, one trouble can blow everything. They start with prayers and end with investigation. That's their slogan. We start with prayers and end with investigation. I wrote something here. It's going to help you. Prayer is the key of the morning and the boats of the evening. You hear me? Prayer is the key of the morning that opens and the boats in the evening that locks the door against invaders that is if you are not praying sir you don't have key to open and you don't have boat to put your door it's the key to open in the morning and the boat sir to put it at night because invaders come where at night you are blessed are you getting blessed? That is, you subject yourself to prayers. Etuku abubalai muruzwaga burungle kika ababo mahashwane male tuliabo tuliabo swadenaga ruzgi gihalo shia mama mahane prayers. So much prayers. I wrote something here in prayer. I said, let everyone try and find out as a result of daily prayers, we add something new to our life and something which nothing can be compared. You add something new to your life every day by maintaining an auto prayer and that thing cannot be compared with anything. When you stop praying, you start dying without you knowing and you see let me tell you something spiritual death is the sweetest death <laughs> because even when you are dying spiritually you are, you are enjoying it that's why you can't come to church you are enjoying watching the TV at home you are enjoying clubbing that's why spiritual death is sweet it's not bitter it's all a physical death that is painful spiritual death you just enjoy you, you see there are people that take pleasure for church not to host her. i won't go to church oh are you not sure they must they they verbalize they, they magnify this virus because this two months has killed them spiritually it's a sweet day but a dangerous day that takes you to eternity in hell do you know the blessedness of coming together as a church he said they go from strength to strength every one of them that appear before God we are in Zion take a plati kanana miradi asusha langamba lakigi gagabana there is someone's strength is being renewed now if you believe it you say louder amen here if you believe it your amen will be the loudest on this mountain here So much of prayers. That is, you pray. You pray. I 
do you pray? You pray the word. This is a school. Oh. That's why I'm taking my time to explain these things. The Lord told me, say, take your teaching deeper. Are you getting blessed? What are the benefits of praying prayers to growth? One. Yeah, this one. Helps you to develop relationship with God. Prayers helps you to develop relationship with God. Two, prayers helps you to gain an understanding of God and His love. Also, His ways. Also, His ways. Prayer helps you to gain understanding of God. Come on. His love and His ways. You can't know God until you become a man of prayers. You can't. You don't know God by your intellectuals. You know God by kneeling down to Him. No man can know God aside prayers. Three. Prayers gives you direction and confidence in the midst of trouble. Four, prayer gives you strength to avoid temptation and overcome stagnation. Prayer gives you strength to overcome temptation and destroy stagnation. We're talking about spiritual growth prayers now the next thing we look at here quickly is the word somebody said the word are you getting blessed we might round up here are you getting blessed this morning talk to me church are you getting blessed somebody said the word shout it louder <laughs> second timothy quickly chapter three Second Timothy chapter 3, 16 to 17. Quickly. Second Timothy chapter 3, 16 to 17. Quickly. Let's read. All scripture. How many scripture? Say it louder. How many? Did he say some? All. They all means the complete Bible. All scripture is given by the by inspiration of God and what is profitable for what doctrine. Now hold on. Now, first of all, you must understand that the scripture is for your profiting. It's for what I'm going to say something deeper now from this scripture. Follow me. He said, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and it is profitable for the for doctrine, for reproof. Now, the word doctrine talks about stipulated order in the church. The word reproof talks about reproof. You reprove somebody. You are going somewhere, he reproves you. That's why David was speaking. David said, the word is a line unto my word and a lamp unto what? And then David now went further to say, thy word, thy rod and thy staff, the word, they comfort me. The word rod is for striking correction. That is inside the word is the rod aspect. Also inside the word is the staff aspect. The staff is for direction. The rod is for whipping. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? And I said for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. For what? Correction. That is every time you are missing it, go back and look at the word. That's why Paul was liking the word as a mirror. That's why he said as we behold him as in a glass in a glass we are changed from one level of glory to the other that is what the world does is that the world changes you am i speaking to a child of god here the fastest way to be transformed is the world the world is a transformer the world is a transformer as i behold them as in a glass change. The word change talks about I'm transformed. I am transformed. 
That is, if you don't expose your mind to the world, you cannot be transformed. You see that? It is the world. That's why, listen, listen, look up everyone. Church is not for perfect people. Church is for an imperfect people that the world is transforming on a daily basis and on a surface level. Am I talking to somebody here? That is, if you come to a church and you are looking for a perfect guy, you have come to the wrong place. Church is like an hospital. We are different. And it's not a specialist hospital. It's a universal hospital. It's a multipurpose hospital. You have mad people there. You have crazy people there. You have different kind of people. That is, the pastor is pastoring different kind of amen people. Am I talking to someone here? That is, if you come to a church, say, Sister Veru offended me. That's why I'm not coming to you. You don't understand the purpose of a church. If you are perfect, the day you got perfect, you die and go to heaven. That's why the Bible said the path of the just is like a shining light that shines more and more. Hold on. More and more. Unto. That is, we are going unto somewhere. Unto the perfect day. You know what is perfect? The perfect day is the day Jesus will appear in the cloud. There is no perfect day until Jesus shows up. That is, as far as Jesus has not shown up, your perfection is not just established. Am I talking to somebody here? That is, church is not a place you come and begin looking for fault. If you are looking for fault, you are, you, are, you are partially insane. Do you go to hospital and be asking people on the sick bed, say, get out here, you are sick, you ought not to be in the hospital? That's why they are there. You come to church because you are not normal. That's why I take time to teach. As everybody is looking at me, everybody has different issues. You might be money. Somebody who might be that the wife spoke to him wrongly this morning. The Lord corrected me that with me in this lockdown. He said, if you are going to, he said, I blessed you with the teaching ministry. He said, but if you are going to pass to a major church in your dispensation, you must understand this. That is, you do anything now, just look at your love. The best I will ignore you. That is, you don't have that pastor that used to shout again. You can go on and misbehave. Am I talking to somebody here? It's when you tell people not to misbehave that they misbehave. If you say misbehave, they won't misbehave. <laughs> Am I talking to someone here? That is, the word is for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, listen. The word in righteousness, in righteousness. It didn't say outside righteousness. It didn't say unto righteousness. It said in righteousness. That is, you are inside righteousness is a gift that is paid in your account that you never worked for somebody worked and paid the money for you your own is just to enjoy it eat suya drink anything he has been paid for who paid for it two thousand years ago who was the person jesus how did i know he said it is finished enjoy how did i know the father's eye can't behold iniquity he was carrying iniquity and because of that the father turned his eye against him and he said enjoy you don't grow in righteousness. Righteousness is there. You grow in holiness. What is holiness? Holiness talks about consecration. Being holy to God. And what helps you to grow in holiness is the word. It's the word. That's why I say, as we behold them as in a glass, we are changed in the same image. We are changed to him. Jesus, you are looking at Jesus. What you look at is what you look like stop looking at sin look at Jesus so that you can look like him am I talking to somebody here that is you must feed your spirit with the world feed your spirit with the world let's read one more scripture James chapter 1 verse 22 but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own self is the doing of the word that gives growth. Listen to this. God will never speak to you if you have not obeyed the last instruction he gave you. Oh Lord, speak. He's telling you the one I told you last, you didn't do it. He said, be a doers of the word. Not hearers alone. Huh? Deceiving your own self. Now listen to this. Now when you hear the word you don't do, you are deceiving yourself. Many deceivers in churches. When you hear the word on steam worship, titan, 
covenant practices and you don't do you are deceiving yourself i have said it before god cannot bless a non-titer if you build a home mansion you are not a non-titer you will still sell it it might take little time titan secures the blessings of god on your life you are sure of tomorrow by the grace of time on titan let's take this one more scriptures and we move into the benefits Matthew 4 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not what? Live by what? Bread alone. But by what? Every word that proceeded out of the matter where? What keeps you alive is the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. That proceeded out of the mother where? The God of heaven. Now, listen. The word of God is divided into three parts. In this kingdom, we operate by threes. There's a law of three. There's a law of seven. There's a law of 21. Now, listen. We have what we call the written word. We have what we call the spoken word. And we have what we call the living word. The written words is what we call letters. And the Hebrew word for letters is called logos. It said the letter kill it, but the spirit give it what? Life. I want to take it deeper. It is the spirit breathing on the written words that we call Rema. Because Rema is the giver of life. Hello? What is Rema? The spoken word. When the Holy Ghost breathes on that written word, you begin to hear the voice of God from it. Am I talking to somebody here? You see, don't read the Bible like novel. Read it with your heart open. When you hear men of God say things like, the Lord said to me last night, it wasn't like the Lord appeared like Hagen. One of the men that had a series of encounters, Jesus appearing to them face to face was Kenneth Hagen. And it's rare in the generation to have such a man. But there's a way God can appear to you every day is by making sure your spirit is light enough to hear the voice of God from letters. Anything you hear from God, you are empowered to make it happen. You can't hear God and not have faith. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Jehovah. Quickly, what are the benefits of the word? I will run it very fast. I won't, I won't explain anything. I'll just be writing. I'll run very fast. One. The, the, the word is the source of faith. Romans 10, 17. Faith, by, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The word is the source of faith. Two. The word is the source of our salvation. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Four, three. The word is the source of truth. John 17, 17. The source of truth. For the word is the source of freedom. John 8, 31. 5. The word is the source of our spiritual food. Matthew 4, 4. Man, that we read. Matthew shall not live by bread alone. 6. The word is the source of our growth. 1 Peter 2, 2. As a newborn babe, desire the sincere make of the world that you may grow thereby. Seven, the world is the source of our victory over temptations. Psalm 119 verse 11. Eight, it is a source of purity and holiness. Psalm 119 verse 9. Psalm 119 verse 9. Source of purity and holiness. Nine, it is our source of spiritual checkup. Spiritual checkup. Hebrews 4 12. We read that now. Hebrews 4 12. Source of spiritual checkup. You want to check your spiritual state, you do it from the word. 10. It is our source of guidance in the dark world. Psalm 119, verse 105. You are blessed. I say you are blessed. I say you are blessed. I say you are blessed. Have you been blessed this morning? 
let me say this as we rise up and pray fervently how do I read the word and understand when you are to read the word and understand come with the heart of a child God does not speak to adult God speaks to his children God does not speak to colleague God speaks to his children God does not speak to I too know people God speaks to his children that is have the mind that you are a child of God sir and you want to hear from your father when you have such a mind he speaks to you every time hmm? that is you don't open Bible with the mindset of I know it or no Lord what are you saying how, when you want to read and understand have the mind that you want him to speak to you and the truth there is that God we always speak to his own God we always speak to his own the proof of sonship is confidence there are things they will tell you at home that they won't tell me because you are a biological mother is it true confidence that is if God is your father you have confidence towards him so much are confidence you are blessed have you been blessed this morning have you learned something talk to me church have you learned something rise up on your faith Lord the rain forever rise up on your feet lift up your hands Lord the rain forever I worship you is one I know I worship you Lord the rain forever forever Lord the rain Oh, <laughs> 